Anton and Jocke Tuna have called this apartment in the Dutch city of Den Haag home for the last 40 years. Sure. And not much changed until last summer when a whole new facade was added to their building with thick insulation and triple glazed windows making their apartment yeah, it's like a boy. much warmer, they say, yeah. and energy efficient. In tail house, heavy bottom now. It's one of more than 6,000 homes that have gotten a new climate-friendly energy retrofit based on ideas from a not-for-profit called Energy Sprong. We always had in mind that buying a retrofit as easy as buying a new kitchen in IKEA. Like, this is one of the oldest. Ron van Erk is a co-founder of Energy Sprong, or Energy Europe. Jump. Yeah. It works with regulators, banks and entrepreneurs to plan how best to retrofit millions of existing homes. Why? Because in order to meet a goal set by more than 100 countries to become carbon neutral by 2050, existing homes, which produce about a fifth of all greenhouse gases, have to be made much more energy efficient. 80% of the buildings that will be here in 2050, at least in Europe, have already been built. And they were not built to the standard that had in mind that we had to you know, eliminate carbon emissions. And so unless we do that to those older buildings, we're never going to get there. I wouldn't say never, but not within the time frame that we got left. Funded initially by the Dutch government, Energy Sprong's mission was to figure out how to industrialize energy efficiency. Part of that new standard, prefabrication and mass production. That's what's happening at this factory called RC Panels. Facades are produced at scale, made of thick insulation covered by a thin layer of fire-resistant polyester. The outer layer can be made to look like bricks. The bricks laid by robots that can place the 2,000 pieces needed for a typical panel in about 20 minutes. They're very bendy bricks. They're ben very bendy because it's only for aesthetics, actually. And so you can kind of actually just yes. break it in half. Yes. What does that mean when it's on the outside of a building? Well, it just stays this way. But okay. the, uh, the only advantage is, is if for ages to come, you might want to demolish your building in about 50 years time and you can recycle it if you want to. And it means that there's much less material impact on the environment as well. The Leander Sherp Kuhlman brought us to a construction site where new facades were being attached to a complex of 300 apartments. The facades include new replacement doors and triple glazed windows built right in to save time on site. We fit exactly. So the millimeter. Because if, if you don't, the door just doesn't open because you have to have that, that, that same hole. It's tailor-made, tailor-made, but in a standardized process, and that's the trick. Attaching one of the panels can be done in as little as 15 minutes. These men are preparing to hoist this huge facade up into the air, and because there's a hook and anchor system on the back of it, they will essentially attach it to this existing building, and it becomes like an insulation jacket the whole apartment complex. These are like huge blocks of Lego, essentially, and they just attach and attach and attach, and you can cover this huge apartment building in just a matter of hours. Another part of Energy Sprung's retrofit strategy, making the switch to 100% electricity instead of gas to heat homes. That's where this comes in, the heat pump. It's like a refrigerator in reverse, taking heat from the outside air to warm a home. It uses very small amounts of electricity, but works best in a moderate climate with well-insulated structures. So we call this the modern chimney. It's not a chimney which gives smoke, but this is the heat pump providing you hot water and heating. The heat pump is part of a system produced by another Dutch startup, Factory Zero. It makes energy modules that incorporate a water boiler, solar panels and a heat pump, all controlled by a computer. Separately, these elements would cost around $35,000. Combined, they're about $14,000. Cheaper, easier to install, but still expensive. Jasper van den Munkhoff, the company's owner, says the key is to convince people the energy savings will help pay for the upgrade. It's the business model behind a net zero home. Your energy bill goes to zero. Literally, it goes to zero meaning that you have a lot of money to spend on actually retrofitting your home, getting the right machinery in, etc. And thanks to lobbying by Energy Sprung, the banks are in on the deal too. The banks in the Netherlands actually give you an extra loan on top of your maximum mortgage if you take a net zero home like we provide. The Energy Sprung model is now being applied in about half a dozen other countries, including the United States. Decarbonizing New York's buildings are frankly one of the biggest challenges in achieving our climate goals. 
Doreen Harris, head of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, told us about its new initiative called Retrofit New York. Retrofit New York is a $30 million initiative which is focused on bringing similar technologies to bear here in New York that have been successfully deployed through Energy Sprung. What would you say to people who say $30 million, it's a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a drop in the ocean? What we see ourselves as is a catalyst for the broader investments that are needed. Its first project, Casa Perceiva in Brooklyn, where two multifamily buildings are being retrofitted. Interior pipes and radiators are being removed or sealed, and the buildings covered with a new facade plus all new heating and cooling systems. Harris says more than 30 other building owners representing nearly 400,000 units of housing have signed a retrofit New York pledge. The challenge here, 6 million buildings across New York State which account for about 45% of the state's greenhouse emissions. We will likely need to use both carrots and sticks to achieve the goals that we have established. Retrofit New York is a great example of a carrot, but it is true that as these solutions become more widely available, we will also need to rely on more traditional approaches like codes and standards, like mandates to improve efficiency. Can this approach work if you don't have the finance guys, the government, the contractors, the homeowners, essentially pulling in the same direction? The answer is no. And what we see is that there are a lot of initiatives going to try to do something about energy efficiency in buildings and try to scale that. But what they all try to do is you know, tweak one thing, you know, work on solving one problem. But if you don't solve all the problems at the same time, you know, the puzzle never really fits. So what we try to do is to understand which are all the pieces that we need to move and then talk to everybody that can move them and make sure that everybody knows that the other person also moved them. And then, you know, we go to that new reality at the same time. That's the, that's the philosophy behind what we try to do here. Ron van Erk acknowledges the work ahead is daunting. So far, these retrofit projects are mostly aimed at what's called social housing, which is regulated and run by co-ops. And there are many styles of homes which make standardization difficult. The Netherlands needs to refurbish 7 million houses to meet its 2050 climate targets. And Van Erk says it's just not possible to do that in the old-fashioned way. Something needs to change and improve in the way we retrofit buildings if we want to get off fossil fuels. This is one of the better ideas that we've come across at least so far.